I've got a question for you. Who among us enjoys getting stuck in traffic? I'm gonna go ahead and assume none of you raised your hand, but what are we gonna do about it? Because as it stands, there isn't much in the way of options. We can either get jammed onto a freeway with a million other cars who are also going nowhere fast, or we can opt to be jammed into a train car or city bus with a bunch of other folks who are entirely too close for comfort. That is the problem that Elon Musk himself grappled with while deadlocked in California traffic. And he thought there had to be a better way. Elon decided he was going to start digging a tunnel and see what happens. And thus, the Boring Company was born, a company that bores tunnels. But that was several years ago, and we have yet to see Elon's tunnel-based urban utopia come to light. To be honest, we haven't really seen very much at all come out of the Boring Company. So what's the deal with that? Is the tunneling business dead, abandoned by Elon in favor of spaceships and Cybertrucks? The answer is tricky. Not entirely yes, but kind of. So today we are talking all about the Boring Company. The wins, the losses, and we figure out what's going on with the tunnels. So let's get going. So we can assume that most people are familiar with the basics of the Boring Company. This is Elon Musk's vision for the transit system of the future. Everything goes underground where high-speed autonomous electric vehicles move from point A to point B. The vehicle side of things he's basically got figured out with Tesla, but we know that Elon is not the kind of leader that plays well with other people. So of course, he needs to be in charge of tunneling as well. Obviously, digging tunnels is not a revolutionary idea on its own. We've been doing that for quite some time with pretty much every major city on the planet. We all know what a subway is, but as with all things that Elon gets involved in, he's looking at taking an existing product or process and doing it in the most efficient, effective, and affordable way possible. Just look at SpaceX. Prior to the Falcon 9, the whole aerospace industry was happy to just let their rocket boosters get destroyed after every launch and then just build a new one every time they need to go to space. I'm sure others had considered the idea of trying to reuse a rocket, but no one actually had the guts to follow through on it until Elon Musk came along. As people, we tend to get addicted to the status quo, but Elon isn't like a normal person. As some people speculate, he's more like an alien or something. An intervention to our addiction to sameness. Anyways, the main goal of the Boring Company is to make tunnels faster and cheaper than anyone else. Much faster. Elon found that traditional tunnel boring moves about 14 times slower than a snail. So one snail can dig its little tunnel that much faster than an industrial boring machine like the ones that make subway tunnels. So Elon's goal with his tunnel was to at least match the snail's pace for digging. So how do you realistically take an existing job and manage to do it 14 times faster than anyone else? The Boring Company's latest tunnel machine called Proofrock is significantly smaller and more powerful than traditional machines. The Boring Tunnels are just 12 feet in diameter, barely enough to fit a Tesla Model X SUV, so not one inch of space is wasted. The Boring Company also aims to run their drill with triple the amount of power than competitors thanks to electric motors instead of diesel-powered engines. And not only does the Proof Rock run stronger and leaner than the usual Boring Machine, it also runs smarter. The cutter on Proof Rock is modified to perform continuous dirt removal as it bores the tunnel, and then it is simultaneously reinforcing that tunnel with precast segments as it moves along. Traditionally, a tunneling machine would stop cutting every five feet to allow for reinforcement installation. The Proof Rock also operates in a way that the company compares to a porpoise. That's like a weird looking dolphin for the record, by which they mean the machine can launch from the bed of a truck, dig itself down into the earth, and then dig itself back to the surface at the end. Traditionally, you would dig a pit first, then lower the drilling machine down into that, and then at the end, you would need to dig another pit to get the machine back again. 
if it's recovered at all. Sometimes the machines will just dig their own graves into the side of the tunnel and stay underground forever because it's easier than getting them back out. And since every tunnel that the boring company drills is exactly the same diameter, these proof rock machines can be reused over and over again. And since they are electric, they require much less maintenance work and refurbishing compared to the usual drilling machines. All of that together has allowed the boring company to get a lot closer to snail pace with their tunneling projects already. They're still about four to five times slower than Gary the Garden Snail, but that would still put them at something like three times faster than their human competition and cheaper too. The average cost of tunnel projects in the United States is about $1 billion per mile. The boring company is aiming to get that down to right around $10 million per mile of tunnel. Okay, so now that we know all of that, let's talk about Las Vegas. This is basically the first real world test for the boring company. They built a 1.5 mile tunnel with three stations underneath the Las Vegas Convention Center. This took about one year to construct, but keeping in mind that work was done by the original Godot boring machine, this was not a current generation proof rock machine. The cost for the whole project came in right around $47 million. It's not exactly a major infrastructure project, but it will help out convention visitors by reducing a 45 minute cross campus walk down to a two minute car ride. Now, of course, this goes without saying, but we'll say it anyway, just to be fair, this is pretty damn far from all of the fancy CGI renderings and boring company concepts that we had been shown in the past. These are literally just Teslas in tunnels that are neither autonomous nor high speed. As it stands, the Tesla vehicles travel through the loop at a speed of about 30 to 50 miles per hour with human drivers in control at all times, and they have a throughput of between four and 5,000 rides per hour. Occasionally, there is even traffic in the loops themselves, which was kind of the whole point of what we were trying to avoid, but it's a work in progress. Does this make the project a failure? I would say no. I don't think it's amazing by any means, but I do think the convention center loop is a really decent proof of concept. The tunnel got built without major delays or catastrophes, no one got hurt, and the whole thing came out looking pretty nice and functioning as advertised. People who use it seem to enjoy it so far. If we look at this with the mindset that this is just a first build from a new company and things can only get better from here, then I think we are on the right track. Count me as cautiously optimistic. For the next step, the boring company is going to be expanding their presence in Las Vegas to serve the majority of the cities downtown. The Clark County Nevada Commissioner's Board approved a franchise agreement with the Boring Company on October 20th, 2021, that gives them permission to install and operate a transportation system below the Vegas Strip. The Boring Company plans to install 29 miles of tunnels with 51 stations, up to 57,000 passengers could reportedly be transported every hour using Tesla vehicles that will, in theory, eventually be able to drive autonomously at high speeds through the narrow tunnels, which is key for this to succeed. Without autonomy and high speed inside the tunnels, there is absolutely no way they will get even close to that number of people being moved. But with all of the developments we have seen from Tesla with their full self-driving program, which can now drive pretty damn well through inner city traffic with minimal human intervention, I can't see any reason why these cars shouldn't be able to rip through an empty tunnel on their own. There will also be no public funding provided to the construction of the Vegas Loop. The Boring Company will self-fund the entire project and earn back the expenses by collecting fares from riders. The company will pay a quarterly franchise fee to the city of Las Vegas in exchange for the use of their land or underland. I don't know the technicalities there. This is a really unique way to approach public transit. Usually the city government would pay a company a large sum of money to build them a transit system, and then the city would recoup the expenses by taking over fare collection. This boring company deal is the opposite, and it makes a lot of sense. By putting the financial burden and payoff on the builder slash operator, 
it really incentivizes them to provide and maintain a high quality product that stays profitable in the long term. This sounds like a win-win scenario. And there are even more opportunities coming up far away from Las Vegas. The Boring Company's proposal for the Las Olas Loop in Fort Lauderdale, Florida was made public in November of 2021, revealing some more details about the new tunneling project. The Boring Company first submitted an unsolicited proposal for the loop on June 21st, 2021. Full details of the proposal were kept secret according to state law until recently when confidentiality rules expired. The proposed tunnel system would bring passengers from Fort Lauderdale's Brightline Rail Station to the beach in three minutes. Similar to the Las Vegas Convention Center loop, the Las Olas loop will use Teslas to transport passengers through the system. The Tesla cars will be moving at an average speed of 50 miles per hour as per the proposal. The loop is designed with further expansion in mind and can grow to connect key destinations and travel hubs within the city and beyond. Much like their tunnel expansion under the Las Vegas Strip, the Boring Company is offering to pay the upfront costs of the Las Olas Loop themselves and receive compensation over the long term. Fort Lauderdale's Vice Mayor Heather Moraitis wrote in a letter to the state governor, Building more bridges will congest our approximately 165 miles of intercoastal waterways, frustrate our marine industry and our commuters. While increasing rail options are a good thing, piling on top of current infrastructure doesn't make long-term sense. Tunneling is that cost-effective and cutting-edge solution. Now, this is all great news, but we do have to talk about the Boring Company's track record for actually bringing project ideas to reality, because at this point, it's not so great. Despite the many wins that the company has made, they've taken a lot of L's. There were the 405 freeway and the Dodgers stadium tunnels in Los Angeles. Those both died in a regulatory no man's land of environmental reviews and lawsuits from residents. Then there was the Chicago O'Hare airport loop that was much hyped in 2018, but the incoming mayor Lori Lightfoot who took over in 2019 just wasn't interested in the project. Or the most ambitious of all Boring Company proposals, a high-speed loop between Washington DC and the city of Baltimore, a distance of about 30 to 40 miles. Despite having support from the governor of Maryland and state officials, this project again went nowhere. It's been said by those in the construction industry that it's not the speed of your drilling machine that you have to worry about, it's the environmental reviews and approvals that dictate how your project moves forward. And so far, Elon hasn't been able to invent his way out of these approval processes. And that happens to be the exact thing that is holding up Elon's new Starship launch from the experimental rocket factory in South Texas. SpaceX is stuck waiting for FAA approval to launch their ship, ready or not. So that's where we are at with the Boring Company. What do you guys think? Is this tunneling idea all hype and no substance? Or are they just in the early days of a business model that is going to grow into something on par with Tesla, SpaceX, and Neuralink? Drop your thoughts in the comment section below and leave a like if you found this video insightful. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you want to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.